Are your kitchen and bathroom way overdue for a remodel? Well, I got the guy for you. Call John Sellers at First Response Contracting, 484-256-7136. Both residential and commercial services, and he's licensed and insured. Call him at 484-256-7136, First Response Contracting. Hello, this is Brad Wiseman. You're listening to Real Estate and You. We are back in the studio for another awesome show. We got great information here for you. We have the Sheriff of Berks County, so I got to behave for this show. The Sheriff of Berks County, Eric Weekneck, is here, and uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff today. I am super excited that you're here. And There's a lot of information that we talked about before we went on the show here, and I'm excited to go over it because I'm actually learning things that I didn't know before. That's good. So welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you for having me, Brad. Yes. and he's happy to be here. And he's in uniform, too, so that means I really have to behave. Hugo, behave, all right? You got to behave. All right, so no, I want to jump into here. I want to just tell people how long you've been doing this. It blows my mind. Been doing this forever. Yeah. I started in the sheriff's office in 1984. So what did you come right out of high school and go into this? I was out of high school a year and a half. A year and a half. 20 years old. I went into the courthouse. I filled out an application and then Sheriff John Kramer Oh my me. gosh, that's and crazy! I've been there ever since. No, what, wait, you go, what? Were you in high school going? Geez, I'd love to be in the sheriff's department. I yeah. For some reason, I mean, ever since I was young, I always wanted to be in law enforcement. Really? And one of the things that attracted me to the sheriff's office was that they didn't have the age twenty one requirement. Oh right. So, so wait. So the police force did. Most police forces are. Oh, that's or amazing. Older. Uh, the sheriff's office did not at the time. We do now. Right. Uh, but so I thought, well, I'll start there, and then you know, move throughout the uh, law enforcement community, and I ended up loving it. Unbelievable. And I stayed ever since. Well, yeah, you're still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Same uniform. Uh, we no, it's changed a lot. Changed a little bit. Yeah, changed, changed a little a bit. Yeah. So you go from that 1984. You started. Then you go to obviously coming up through the ranks and obviously excelling at what you do, and you're good, and your peers think you're doing a great job. And in 2007, you won the election or, or became the sheriff of yep. Berks County. Yep, uh, Sheriff Joswiak was retiring. Yeah. Uh, I worked for him for uh, 12 years. Great guy. And yep. I was started off as an uh, assistant chief and then went to chief deputy. And when he said he wasn't going to run, I thought, well, here's my, here's chance. my chance. I'm going to do it. Now, was that the goal when you first got in? Uh, not really. My When I first got in, I was looking at just using it as a stepping stone. A stepping stone to go into the police then, force, maybe. Yes. Yeah. And then I really enjoyed it. I mean, Berks County is a big county. Yeah, it is. So you have countywide jurisdiction and you have all kinds of things to do. It's, it's not very like, diverse. Exactly. Very diverse. Exactly. We have our income wise, we're diverse, you know, cultures were diverse, you know, all diversity. I mean, that's what we have. We're, you want to talk about the example of the United States in one County. We are the melting pot right here in Berks very County. Well put. Right. Absolutely. Very well. Put. Yeah. So, yes. it, so you go to do that. So now you become sheriff. How is that going? It's going great. It's going great. It's Good. going great. I mean, I truly love my job. That's I great. really do. And you know, I, have I can tell. An amazing staff. And, yeah, that's cool. And they make it so much easier for me. My command staff, they've all been there for many, many years. My chief deputy, she's been there over 20 years. Amazing. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, hey, this is what needs to be done. And yeah. you know, it's going to get done. Yeah. That's, and you know, and it's so funny. They always say a good leader is, is all about who surrounds them. That's, yes. It really is. You I put mean, good that, people in, you, in the jobs, it makes your job much easier. Absolutely. You and, and it's all about delegating and filling the spaces and the voids of of who you're not. Yes. You know, exactly. I mean, I the reason I have Hugo is because I suck at all the other stuff besides <laughs> just talking on this microphone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have uh, Tony who does the the, uh, the the social media stuff. And it's what it's about. It's about getting a team together and, and doing it as a team. So that's awesome. Well, you're doing a great job. There's a lot of I, I, I was that. looking on your website and I see all the things that you've done so far. Uh, it's pretty, pretty incredible. Some of the things like the chaplain thing, I, I, I didn't yes. know about that. Bringing the chaplain into was in 2007, 2008. You did yeah. that, I think. Yep. And you're running again this year. I'm up. You're for up election for election again. In, uh, 2023. So he has to be nice to us then actually, Hugo, right. because he has to, he has to be nice to us so that, you know, we vote for him. Yeah. That's really what it's about here. But one of the nice things about <laughs> being there that long yeah. is if I don't get elected, then I just retire. Oh my gosh! So you I don't have how to be your typical politician, and <laughs> that's you know, true. And kiss up to everybody. <laughs> that's I, I good. Can just be that is hey, actually this good. This is the way it is. This is the Eric Wheatnick you're voting for. If you don't like so it, don't true. vote for me. 
Well, you got my vote. Just well, I appreciate it. And I know I heard your wife wants you to keep working, too. Yeah, it's, she's the driving force behind that. I've heard that. Every yeah. time I bring up retirement, <laughs> she's like shaking her head. No, that's not going to happen. And she's a wonderful person, so I can't yes, pick on is. her. She's a wonderful person. So let's get into some of the stuff I want to talk about here. When I set this up, I wanted to talk about you know sheriff sales. You know, mm-hmm. This is the, the doom and gloom or ugly word, the sheriff sale word. Um, and, and when we started talking about this, it, it started a whole new conversation was that I forgot that you guys also are the ones serving foreclosures. Correct. So you see not only the beginning of a bad thing happening for somebody, yeah. and then you finish it off at the end. Hopefully not. Hopefully they can work it out. Right. And I just want to go through these numbers because we have a lot of people saying, and this is just a local thing now, we have a lot of people saying that, oh my gosh, it's the bubble again. This is, you know, things are heading the same way as 2008, but the numbers that you told me about uh, yeah. that had happened in the past. Now go over, um, let's go back, let's go back in time a, a yeah. little bit. And Give me you, the foreclosure numbers and also the sale numbers. So those are two different things. Right. Two different things. Yep. So you have a filing. Mm -hmm. So that's the person that's going through the mortgage foreclosure process. Correct. And you actually have the sold number. Uh, If you go back to 2014, we had almost 1,400 mortgage foreclosures in the process. Wow. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And uh, almost 900 of those were sold at a sheriff's sale. That's a lot. Yeah, That's a lot of people that- It's a big number. Going through a tough time. It truly is. And and the process is in- Serve it one day, sell it the next yeah. day. I mean, it, it's a two-year process probably. Is that about what it is? It's usually like two years till till the people start failing to pay the yeah. bank, the bank turning around, trying to work with them, starting the process, and the process going through all of the the personal service, yeah. uh, listing it for a share of sale, uh, continuances, everything else. You're, you're looking at probably two years till it would actually go to... So people have time. They really do have time. You know, and that's the thing I think that is a good thing for people to hear. And we don't want people to to go into that process to to go the two years. But what's amazing is that they give you time. You know, you have time for your life and your financial situation to possibly change. And you had mentioned to me before we went live that the banks don't want the house. Absolutely. They They don't. The banks don't want the property. And and if you have a person who's in that that unfortunate situation yeah. and they reach out to the bank, there's a lot that they can do. Yeah. Uh, the bank will work with them, uh, you know, try to get them caught up on the arrears and do whatever they yeah. have to do, because the last thing they want to do is get a property, then go through the whole pro- uh, property of re- either selling it, yep. fixing it up, whatever they want to do to try to recoup some of their money. Yeah. And that's good to know too. Cause I think a lot of people think that, Oh, it's the, the ugly, terrible bank is coming in to take over right. it, it. They don't want the house. I mean, banks are not in the business of owning property. They don't, correct. they don't want it. That's correct. So, uh, yeah. so let's go now. Let's, let's shift through some of these years here yeah. now. So, so we had, we had 50, it was 1400 and then 900 were sold. 1400 foreclosures. This past year, Where are we at in 2022? 2022 this year, uh, we had 221 mortgage foreclosure, okay. uh, uh, filings. Yep. And we sold 82 properties. So what was the first number again? Uh, Two, the, no, no. What was the, what the, for the filings this oh, year? Oh, the filings this year, 221. So only 90, you said, then sold? 92 sold. Yeah. See, that's actually good. Cause that means a lot yeah, of people, they, they got themselves back together. Lowest numbers we've seen in a long, long time. That's good news. Yeah. Now, and, and I think a little bit of that is also people, when they get themselves in that situation with today's market, they're able to sell their property. Yeah. Uh, for probably a little Equity. bit more than what it is. It is worth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, people, I mean, you you deal with it every day. Yep. That, that's your life, being yeah. a realtor. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you tired of looking at your car covered in road salt and winter grime or not quite getting the results you would like to see from the car wash? Well, I've got just the solution for you. The Detail Shop, your go-to destination for premium auto detailing. Well, and it's funny when we talked about this a little bit, the, the supply thing is what really, really saves the foreclosure situation. Yes. When you have a very, very low supply, it, it makes it easier actually for people to stay in their home or to sell it and get out of it with a little bit of profit. Right. You know, and you, you mentioned something to me that was really crazy. I never thought of is that you had a couple of them that you sold this year, I guess it was, or was it in this the year? last two years, the last two years, you had a couple that were sold that. They actually wrote checks back to the the people that foreclosed. Yes. And and 
primarily we, we had to change the way we were doing sheriff sales because of COVID. Right. Uh, we had restrictions set in place that, you know, we couldn't assemble so many people Correct. into our sales. So we went with an online company. Yeah. And the online company opened it up to basically the entire world. So mm-hmm. instead of just having some local investors come into the to the yeah. sheriff sale and bid against each other, it opened it up and people will look at the property and they'll yeah, bid from it and it drives up the price. Yeah. And you know how competitive bidding can get. It, it, well, it's, it's like gambling at that point. Exactly. It really is. And once the judgment is paid off and the fees, if there's money left over, it has to go back to the property owner. Unbelievable. So you were writing checks back to the property owner. Exactly. Yeah. And, we, and I've never seen that in my career until we started the online share sale. Well, that's, so that's a really good thing. And those are, that's the thing too about COVID. There's so many things that we've, I mean, as much as COVID was terrible, it was absolutely terrible, but thank God in America and, and with the way we are, we, we find the good. Yes. We find the good in the things that go on. And, and there are a lot of good things that happened since COVID. Yeah. And it's really, really exciting to hear that, you know, somebody might be able to get a check. They had a bad yeah. time and now they left and they're sitting there going, Oh my gosh, I just got some money back. That's amazing. Yeah. And, but one of the things, and, and we do stress this a lot to the people buying, not losing their home, but buying their yeah. home is they're buying it as is yeah. and they have absolutely no rights to go into that property because it's still owned by the individual. Yep. Uh, so Good it's, point. it's hit or miss. You have to do your homework. Yeah. They're also buying it with possible encumbrances on it too. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, you know, the people who are buying these, they definitely have to do their homework, title search, everything else to make yep. sure that, you know, they're and getting I, what they're thinking they're paying I for. tell people that all the time, Eric, I say to people, um, you know, especially the first time buyers or, you know, somebody's coming in for their primary residence for the first time. I'm like, I really don't think it's a good situation right. to be buying a share of sale. Exactly. I mean, you don't want to discourage people from getting a great deal, but man, there's so it, many things that could go not so good. Absolutely. You know, and, and you know, what's amazing too is, um, we, we had talked about this. What about squatters who takes care of that? I mean, there's times where these houses, you know, they're secure to a point. I mean, there's padlocks and all that stuff on and, and there's companies that come in and do that. They, the banks hire people to come in and actually yes. lock them down. Right. Yes. Once we, once we issue the deed. Okay. Uh, then it goes to the, the new property owner. Then they have to start the, the foreclosure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not I'm the, sorry. The eviction, the, the eviction, the eviction process. process and the eviction process, depending what time of year it is in the winter time, it's a little longer. It could take a while to get those people out. Yeah. And they're talking about the person that purchased it or are you talking about the, the bank? What about the bank seeing somebody's uh, in there? The bank would do the same thing. Same thing. They got to yeah. go through the eviction process. They got to go through the eviction process. Because once they're in there, they're a tenant. Correct. Right. Yeah. I see. Correct. I was right about and that. And then the laws are, you know, the <laughs> landlord tenant complaint, yeah. everything else. Yeah. Follow through with it until you actually get the deputies to go and remove the people. It could be 45 days or more or more. Yeah. yeah. It's 45 to 60 days. Cause when I had, yeah. when I had apartments, that's about what it was. Yeah. 45 to 60 days. Unbelievable. So squatters are that, that's a real thing. I mean, it, oh, it, it can happen. Is. Yeah. Yes. yes. Unbelievable. So let's go on to, um, what do you think people don't know about your role as the sheriff, I think sometimes what I see is some people confuse the police department with the sheriff's department. Because you know, I think the reason why, too, is depending where you go, come from, like down in, I think, in Florida, they're called sheriffs, I believe. Like yes. the cops are called sheriffs, the right. policemen. And they do actual uh, police work, uh, juris- work yeah, for, they do. for uh, you know, municipalities. Yeah. So what's the difference? The difference here is we uh, have countywide jurisdiction. Uh, okay. We do criminal uh, okay. work. We also do civil work. Police okay. don't do any civil work. That, so that means serving civil complaints, right, uh, you know, divorce, uh, all that stuff, yeah, all that yes. stuff. Uh, but we are assisting the local police. OK, so we will not re- be responding to 911 calls unless okay. we're asked to assist okay. someone. Uh, but we have a canine division, yeah, which will assist the, the local municipalities yep. who don't have one. And I read you have like you have bomb sniffing, you have all kinds of yep. different different dogs for that, which is really cool. Yep, uh, narcotics. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then uh, we also have uh, nine members who are on the county SWAT team. Okay, cool. So the uh, Berks County has a SWAT team. Uh, it's called BCERT. Okay, and we have nine members of that team on our, on the beach. So there's so special, like specialty, like special they, training. They're, if there's somebody holding up somebody ransom, whatever, or all that stuff. Right. That, that's, that's their job. Yeah. Wow. And it's basically what they call the SWAT is the 911 call that a police officer needs when they need help. Oh, wow. So if yeah, it gets to that point where they that's need crazy. help, they, wow. they call B-cert. 
And, and that's uh, who comes out. And that's who comes out. And they're, wow. they're amazing. I mean, their training is amazing. Their tryout is like an 18 hour day just to become a member of it. Oh my gosh. So, uh, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm pretty yeah, sure. No, I wouldn't <laughs> pretty <laughs> sure. They'd be like, uh, you need to jump over this ad now. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So we do that. Um, we have, uh, cars out on the street, uh, doing civil process. They also, have, uh, enforced a motor vehicle code. Okay. So if there's anyone speeding or you know, oh, you can do that too. It, absolutely. Yeah. Didn't know that. We issue citations. Because I always and, go flying past the sheriff's yeah. cars, thinking he can't do it. I do this. Yeah, I actually give the you know do the little sign. Not real good. Not a good uh, idea. Yeah, no. no, I know Eric. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Well, so I they, they enforce keep the that in vehicle mind. code. Um, we also assist with. Um, we had a lot of protests over the oh, last yeah. several years. Yeah. So we were always there to assist with the Reading police or any other agency that had the protests yeah. by giving bodies. And that's one of the things, I mean, Berks County, you said about is being Very so diverse. diverse. Uh, you know, you have Reading police department with a you know, hundred plus guys. Yeah. Uh, you have some of the other municipalities where they may only have two full-time police oh, yeah. officers. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, Brecknock township has maybe four or five police officers. Yeah. But their venue is they have the the speedway. Yeah. They oh, yes. They also do the country western uh, fall yep. festival. Yep. So they have thousands of people coming in. Well, like Shillington, the community days. Shillington, I, I mean, that's one of the ones days. that comes up Absolutely. for me. I always think yes. of that. You know, Shillington's only so big; they don't have a huge police force. You got tens of thousands of yep. people. So, I mean, it wasn't built for that. <laughs> yes, and so we yeah. constantly are supplying people. Yeah. West Reading, they have the fall festival, and yep. you know all that. So we have a great working relationship with these police departments because they need support. bodies. Yeah, of course. Support. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we handle traffic and also bodies at the Maple Grove Raceway. Oh, cool. Uh, working with the chief there. Uh, nice. You know, like you mentioned, uh, with the community festival, hamburger festival, I and mean, yep. we're oh, all that's over a the big place. one. Oh my gosh, and, it's crazy. You know, you want to show a police presence because mm-hmm. obviously it works. Keeps everyone in line. You got and, that right. You know, it's it's an easy detail for the for the deputies. Yeah. You know, just walk around, be visible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Take some canines maybe because that always helps Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that is good. I, th- You know, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Like any um, stories or anything you well, can tell me about the um, the sheriff's department or, or your job being sheriff? Like well, one of the things that we are struggling with right now, is, mm-hmm. and so is every single pl- law enforcement agency, is recruitment. Uh, now, we're doing better than probably most of the sheriffs in, in right. the Commonwealth. We only have one vacancy right now. Okay. When I started in, uh, well, when I took over as sheriff, mm-hmm. we used to get hundreds, literally hundreds wow. of applicants. Um, we do a written test. There's actually three written tests that we do. We then do a physical agility test, then interview, then background, yeah. then psych test, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But we just had, I think, 12 people take our written test this last process. Wow, that's it. Yeah. And out of that, and that's not good because then you know, you're 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 picking from a much yeah. smaller uh, exactly. field. Yeah, exactly. We had we had five show up to our physical agility testing. Oh my three gosh! That wow. so we have a list right now with three people. What about and, retirement too? And for we people? have a lot of retirements coming up. We have a lot of uh, deputies who are mm. at that retirement age where they have to make the decision if they're going to go or not. Yeah. So we're struggling with that uh, as far as you know uh, people. Wanting to get into law enforcement. Yeah, well, I think and that's and that's that's nationwide. Unfortunately, that's nationwide. Absolutely. I mean, that's because you know uh, the, the media, the people out there. Some people were giving all of law enforcement a well, bad rap. And also, I think people really see what their job is now with body cameras. Uh, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Because yep. you see the footage of body cameras. Absolutely. Where, you know, you walk up to a person. Next thing you know, they're pulling a gun, and you know, you're. Yeah. It's not. It, it is not for the. Uh, the faint at heart. No, I so, mean it, you, they're, they're, it's real. Yeah, it you know, it's, it's real. Is. Yeah, and uh, no, well, yeah, I, we got to spread the word. We got to spread the word. You have a question, Hugo? Yeah, I have a question. I, uh, you know, as Brad mentioned earlier, I'm from Guatemala, and when I came here to the United States, and I saw the respect, the integrity of the police, not only as an institution, but the individuals too, that I had the chance to walk up and ask them random questions. Um, I always looked back at my country and said. What happened here in this nation to the law enforcement that is so much different to mine? Because back in Guatemala, they're all corrupt. You know, there's no mm. integrity. Yeah. It, but there, but there's also no respect because the system that they have is, is just terrible. As a citizen, you can walk and kick a police officer, and it, it was so it, it was so amazing to me to see the integrity, the respect that the people have. Yeah, uh, I, I, the, I I know the, exactly the, what you mean. The, the, yep. the degree of authority that the, you know. Yes. You must obey. You have to do it. If I was to, if you were to send to Guatemala, to other country, to 
to establish that trust uh, from the citizens and vice versa. What would you, well, how would you do that? I always thought about that. What would That's I a good do? Question. That's a really, really good, good question. question. I mean, I don't know because like you said, I mean, I'm spoiled. Uh, here in Berks County, we have law enforcement supporters. That's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we saw it when, uh, we lost deputy Kyle Paggerly. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the people, the citizens of Berks County literally lined the streets yep. to say their final goodbye to, to deputy Paggerly. And, you know, and I, I don't think we lost that. No, I think Some we're 99% in this, in this County. I think we're 99.9 we really support law enforcement, support sheriffs, the policemen, whatever. Yep. I think, um, I think there's other areas that's not the same. That's not that way, uh, but it's a great question. And I, and I worry Hugo that we, we would start to go in that direction because mm-hmm. once that happens, you lose your country. Mm-hmm. You lose, when you lose law enforcement, you lose, you lose everything without a question. We, yeah. That's the whole thing we're about is laws yeah. and rules and, and all those things. Well, so it's a great question. Let, let me just great observation. This. I think that, I think that it's worthwhile to mention this, but um, you know, I, I I think that it's great that you come out to, you know, do this sort of uh, event. You come out so that the community can get to know about uh, more about you. But also, you know, what thing that I noticed uh, when I first came, and I remember I got pulled over in, in, in South Carolina by a police officer. The first time I was driving a car <laughs> in the United States, I got pulled over. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, I have to say, you know, I had to think about what was I going to do? Yeah. Because I think that as a police officer, if I was a police officer, I would use my judgment when I see an individual to analyze, okay, you know, what sort of person this yeah. is. And I think that when I was hearing about this uh, um, political uh, uh, racism, whatever, that police brutality, whatnot, I yeah. don't even know what that term would be. But I, I thought, you know, when a police officer stops me, you know, even if there was some sort of association of, of what my looks it is i think it is my my duty to 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 behave with respect with communication Absolutely. to break mm-hmm. any paradigm even if you know i don't think that's the case but even if that was the case too yeah to behave yourself and absolutely and and, and talk to the, it's officer the way you're raised with, with compliant huh? it's the way you're raised yeah, yeah. It, I, is. it is you know my my parents always you know i always say this this day i, I there what you call white coat syndrome you go to the doctor I have the blue coat syndrome also. When I see somebody in uniform, I, for some reason, you just get nervous. You, you, mm-hmm. you want to make sure you're doing the right things. You want to make yeah. sure that that, that person. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, when I, whenever I've, I haven't gotten pulled over for a long time, um, but <laughs> whenever I've gotten pulled over for speeding, you know, it, it, your heart starts pounding. You sure. know, you, you get that whole, that whole yeah, rush. Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's the way it's supposed to be. And I really think that as Americans, we just take this for granted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, oh the cop did wrong, so that means they're all bad. Yeah. And that's not the case. And I think it would be really, really good for people to see exactly mm-hmm. what's going on yeah. in Guatemala and these other mm-hmm. countries because they don't realize how good they have it. Yeah. Oh, I, there's I always know, bad. He, he says been. this all the time because of being I from know, Guatemala. Man. Yeah, and yeah. in law enforcement, there's going to be bad. Every profession Absol- is going to have realtors. someone bad. Bad it doesn't producers. All of <laughs> Not him. Not, yeah. But it doesn't take the, the whole no, profession. Absolutely. And I, you know, I and think of another profession where you go in mm-hmm. and you wear a camera and it records everything you're doing. Think about that. I, I, I don't. I, that to me is what's going to turn most people away from from that. Yeah. I mean, I mean and, and 99 percent of the times it, it exonerates the police officers. Yeah, yeah. It shows yeah. that they didn't do it. Which because- is the good thing, but there's times, or, you know, I understand why they're doing it because of the situation we're in with. Right. It's lack of trust. Yeah. is really what yeah. it is. Whenever you have lack of trust, what do you do? You videotape. Right. Yeah. So, and the other thing too, you have to remember is, and I tell my guys this all the time, no matter what you're doing, you're getting filmed. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. But what portion of that film that they're getting on their phone are yeah. they going to show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not going to show the altercation nope. before that provoked the cop nope. to take them down and do what they had to do. Mm-hmm. They're going to show the last part of the it. The last say, part. This is what they did. Yeah, not the, the spitting on him, him, not the exactly. not the swinging at him, not to all the other stuff that he did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and they're going to show the, the, the last worst thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I have one last question. Yes. What is the strangest arrest or situation you have found yourself uh, before as a police officer? It was just weird. It was just like one of the weird strange. ones I had was when I was still a deputy on the street. I, yeah. I got a court order for it was a couple going through, I guess, a divorce, whatever yeah. else, separation. Yeah. And I had a court order to go into the property and take a bird, a parrot. A, a court order to take a bird? A bird. 
Because it was on the divorce decree? Or? I don't even know where, at what point Did you it was. like I think it was a joke? A court order, <laughs> take the bird. So, it was a talking bird. Well, how do you know how to get, take a bird? Uh, it was the court order. They had everything documented. So I went there, knocked on the door. I'm here to take your bird. I'm here to take your bird. People weren't happy. Uh, I don't remember if I took it from the, the woman or the man. Uh, they were saying, this isn't right. Everything else, what can I do? I said, well, you can talk this to your attorney. This isn't right. Your attorney can go to court and all this stuff. So they obviously did that. I took the bird. Gave it to the other party. The very next day, I get a court order to take the bird from the person no, I just gave it to <laughs> and take it back and return it to the person I originally took it from. Oh, my gosh. So they won then. They won. They, they won. won. They must have So you were a bird person. deliverer uh, a bird for deliverer. a couple days. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So I yeah, Now was, I know why you carry a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Those birds can be very mean. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. That's funny, man. That's yeah, really funny. Mean. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. I really, really appreciate it. We talked about a lot of uh, really cool stuff. I do want to know how, if somebody wants to sign up to, to, to think about being on the sheriff's department, how do they do that? Where do they go? They just go to countyofberks.com forward okay. slash sheriff. Okay. Uh, go under employment. It It's all electronic through HR. They just click the button. They do the application. We'll send them a packet. Awesome. Uh, invite them to take our written test and... They become a deputy. Does it pay okay? I mean, is there okay pay? Not compared to municipalities. Okay. But the county is, I mean, the county is a great place to work. They have great benefits. They have great retirement. Uh, One of the nice things, which I said earlier, is we have countywide jurisdiction. Right. We have a lot of divisions. So you could be warrant service. You could be in court. A lot of different things. Canine. I mean, we have a lot to do. Right. Got it. Got it. And we're a big agency. So it's very simple. And we'll send you to the the, uh, police academy. We'll we'll put that information on when we we air the show. We'll put that on there. Um, Thanks for being in here. I think it's great that you're very, very open about the department and what you do. And I think it's great. And that's why I think you've been here for a while. And I'm sure you'll be here for another, was it four years? Six years, whatever. I hope so. Yeah. Four year term. Four year term. That's great. Awesome. Good luck with your election, man. I appreciate it. All right. There we go. That was amazing. We learned so much about the sheriff's department. Uh, Eric is doing a great job. The county of of Berks is doing a great job as a whole with with the uh, sheriff's department. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, So we will see you again next Thursday at one o'clock. Thanks so much for listening. Are your kitchen and bathroom remodels a little overdue? Well, now's your chance to call First Response Contracting. John Sellers will take care of you. 484-256-7136. They do residential and commercial, and they're licensed and insured. Give them a call at 484-256-7136.